Good morning. Good morning. It is Friday morning, January 15th, and we're talking about take heart out of John 16, 33. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control. We thank you that you have a plan. And according to your word, your plan is that we prosper and succeed. Help us, Lord, to walk in your perfect will today. And whatever we say and whatever we do, help us to be an encouragement to someone today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Talking about take heart out of John 16, 33, and it says, Through everything that we encounter in life, we can be grateful that our God is wise, loving, and completely trustworthy. He has told us that we will have trouble because we live in this world. But when we feel overcome, we can believe that he has overcome for us. We can trust him that it's all taken care of, regardless of what it looks like. We can lean into the strength he gives us so we can hang on and press through. Just hours before, he would be arrested, flogged, and crucified. Jesus experienced a level of trouble we never will. Yet he was able to say, take heart. He was essentially saying, cheer up. Why? Because Jesus, whose spirit is within you, is greater than anything the world can throw at you, even when it feels crushing, 1 John 4.4. 4. In him, we can press on knowing that there will be happy, a happy ending guaranteed. In him, we can refocus our sight and thoughts to be above the circumstances we're facing. We can rest that the real battle of overcoming has already been won. And that's when we can walk in unshakable faith. Lord God, thank you that you have overcome everything I could ever face. Thank you for strength to cling to the truth. You are faithful, wise, and loving. And you are growing my faith into unshakable faith. Amen. Amen. Talking about take heart. So anything come to you right off. And our God is completely trustworthy. You know, even though things don't happen the way that we think, you can trust God because he does have your best, best interest in mind. The thing that's going to be best for you may not always look like what we think would be best, but God's got a plan. He doesn't waste anything. Amen. He uses everything, even the struggles that we go through, even the difficulties that we run into. He uses everything Amen. to take us and draw us closer to him, to help us remember that we need him. You know, a, a lot of times when things are going good, we think, oh, I've got this. And then all of a sudden we fall. Yep. And then we're crying out, oh, Jesus, I need you. So we, we need to realize that we need him every day in the good and the bad. Well, so many great things here. Um, like it says in First John 4, 4, they, she talked about it. She said, because Jesus whose spirit is within you is greater than anything the world can throw at you, even when it feels crushing. You know, and I've, one of the verses that's been on my mind lately is that, you know, that God's in control. No matter whether the earth trembles, shakes, whatever it does, we know this. And this really depends on where our faith and our trust is at, focused upon God, focused upon that he is the one that's in control. And like Colossians says, that he holds all things together with the strength of his hands. And uh, he does. And no matter what, he's always looking out for the best for us. So we, we don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious about what's going on when we look at the world and the politics and all the stuff that's happening right now. We don't have to worry about it because we know who holds the future, so mm -hmm. to say. Uh, when we read the book of Revelation and we think about the end times, we know that even through all of that, even though that some of it um, from one's perspective may look at that as being scary, from my perspective, when I look at it, when you see Jesus being who he is all the way through, even to the end of Revelation, we see that God is such a loving, gracious God that is looking for all people to come to know him mm -hmm. and that he wants, he wants to pull us into him and help us. He wants to help us and succeed. He wants to help us to stay strong. 
He wants to help us to understand who he is and that we can trust him. Um, so many things that we don't, we can take heart like this uh, devotion says. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious. But he loves us. He loves you and I so much. And he wants us to succeed. Yeah. And succeed here too is not talking about the world succeed. But succeeding in a relationship with him. Succeeding in what's going to turn into something that's eternal and not just temporal. When we think about the, the lifespan of what we have on this earth, when we talk about a lifespan of 70, 80 at most, you know, 100, maybe 100 years old or something like that. So temporary in the when we look at uh, eternity. <clears throat> so, you know, God is looking for something far greater than what we have here on this earth. Yeah. And so we have to change that kind of that perspective that we're mm -hmm. looking at. So God wants you and I to take heart. So with that, let's close in prayer. We just want to be an encouragement to you because I know that, you know, when we look at what's going on today, if we don't have Jesus, if we don't have this eternal hope, if we don't have the vision and the focus of who he is and what he wants to do for us, it can be very discouraging. I've seen many people that are concerned, that are worried or anxious, and we don't have to be. And I don't want to see, uh, we don't want to have to see people walk through that when we can have what Jesus is giving to us. And uh, so let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the many things that you are doing. And we thank you for your message to us that you want us to take heart. You want us to put our eyes upon you and trust you for all things. So I pray for each one today that may be out there that may be going through struggles in life that are worried or anxious or dealing with all kinds of stuff, the weight of this world. And I pray that today by your Holy Spirit that you would touch lives, that you would change lives, that you would help them to put their eyes and their trust upon you, that they would not worry, not be anxious, not be concerned with all that's going on, Lord. Bless them today. Give them a great Friday as we go into this weekend. And we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. We're going to see you tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. Remember, we're going into the weekend. Find a great a church. Yeah, Sunday. a long weekend because we're all the way through Monday for probably most. So find a good church that preaches the word uncompromisingly, that you can go in and you can have fellowship, that you can worship with one another and have an awesome and incredible weekend. And remember, keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you. Have a great day.